Hello everyone, how are you doing? You're welcome to this week's um, Rugby View with myself, Aidan Raffi, and the show is always kindly sponsored by Best Ride here in Roscommon Town, and we'd like to thank them for their kind sponsorship. And don't forget, uh, just a, a reminder about the Ross FM 50-50 draw. You have two options. You can still buy the envelope. That's one for two euro or three for a fiver. Uh, or else you can go on to rossfm.ie and you can uh, enter online. So uh, why not support your local radio station by doing the 50-50 draw? And uh, as always, we have uh, this week we have uh, Adrian Leddy from Craig's Rugby Club. Hello, Adrian. How are you? Are you well? Good afternoon, Aidan. Oh, oh, very good now, yeah. yeah Great to I'm... have you on board as always. Yeah, so I suppose we we <coughs> there. Um, you were saying there. You were you were saying a game yesterday. Um, a co- the colleges is winding up as well. The colleges finals are hel- are uh, winding up. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, I suppose you know, like you you have all the schools there now, and they're probably coming up to exam time. It's actually. Maybe late in the year for some of the games to be uh, finishing off, but we had we had a game that uh, had to be sort of fixed uh, between um, Barry, St Mary's and Ballygar and um, the community school in Dunmore at under fourteen level. So that final uh, was played yesterday in 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 Craig's in uh, at uh, yeah good good standard uh, of rugby yeah young lads now a lot of them will be playing other sports as well in both schools they they talking to the PE teachers and um the coaches they would say like that they're trying to get them uh active in in all sports some of them would be more active in 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 other codes than maybe rugby but um again it was a, a good standard of rugby for an, an under 14 level uh done more uh, community college uh, were probably the stronger side and 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 went on to to uh, win win the game, but again it was nice to be able to host it in in uh, Craig's and I presented the the trophy to uh, the the winning captain from uh, from from Don Moore uh, at the match. And I suppose looking at uh, Ballygar as well. Uh... You know they 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 would have uh, they would have shown up well as well. They're they, they're uh, a good a good side as well. No, oh, they are. Yeah, and they have boys and girls there going. And our our CRO, uh, Michal Glennon, uh, from Craig's, uh, like um, that is involved with Craig's as our CRO with, with kind of rugby, and um, he's going into Ballygar School, and he would have helped a lot of these uh, young boys and girls that. Have been featuring for for Ballygar School, um, and you know it's it's great great to see it. It's great to see them uh, develop. We had a great old stalwart as a teacher there, oh, oh, um, going back in in uh, great club man Michael Flanagan, previous president of the club. Uh, he done stalwart work um, within within Ballygar for for, uh, for 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 rugby over the years, and 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 kept uh, kept rugby alive and. Uh, when I was coaching underage and managing underage teams myself, a lot of our players uh, would actually have come from Ballygar at that particular time as a result of uh, Michael Flanagan's uh, work within within uh, the school. And you know we have we ha- we have the benefit now of uh, Michael Glennon going into a good lot of the schools and the schools here in Roscommon Town, and uh, and we have players coming from Glenamady and around. So it's it's great to, um, to see. Uh, the development um, of of rugby in in these particular areas and people that you know would be travelling down from Dysart and Four Roads and back back around into that league into Roscommon, back down to Strokestown, Tulse and, and all up into Castlery and so on. So there's a great hinterland of of uh, uh, of players and, and young people there that that both boys and girls that want to play the game. That's it, and I suppose really, if you, if you compare it to, um, as I suppose we said twenty years ago, with regards to rugby, there was kind of there, there wouldn't have been much rugby kind of in in those colleges. We say, uh, Roscommon CBS and and uh, Ballygar and those, those kind of schools. It probably it would have been just confined to maybe Gaelic football and hurling. So it's great to see a new sport in in the, in these colleges as well, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's it's and it's good for you see like. Um, my my point uh, to schools principals over the years was that that only so many players will will get on to 
a, a first team or onto uh, either a rugby team or a Gaelic team or a soccer team. And, you know, what, what do you do with all the other uh, players that's going to the school? And, you know, there's some players more, maybe more suited for soccer, other players more suited for Gaelic football. And then there's uh, another standard of player that's uh, that would maybe not make it at Gaelic football or soccer. And when if you hadn't rugby there, uh, I've seen players coming through um, that never played Gaelic or played soccer, and they they have turned out to be great rugby players. So you know there's there's an itch there for 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 everybody, and some people it's 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 a flavour to 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 give uh, young boys and girls the the opportunity to to play other sports. And uh, the other thing is that you know that we have a lot of uh, people when they qualify now in university, they want to maybe go away for a year or two abroad, whether it's Australia, uh, Canada, America, no matter where. And they're able to take up the sport in these countries as well. We, we have, we're we losing two lads now from our first team. And they have already have been signed up by, by a team in, in Australia. So it's great that they have the experience uh, from Craig's and they can contribute to uh, a team in Australia and continue to play play the rugby. And, uh, and it's good for them because it gives them uh, an outlet, and it gives them a contact uh, uh, with more friends um, uh, where where, they, where they're moving to, and it probably helps them maybe to settle in in a, in a place a lot quicker. That's it, and I suppose really, you know, down the line, if ever they decide to move back home, like you know, I suppose if economic circumstances in, in Ireland change, and that, and they can find that they can get work back here or whatever. Craig's Rugby Club will be here for them and maybe they can get involved in a, in a coaching capacity, um, you know, and, and give back to Craig's what Craig's has given it, has given them. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, the, some of these some of these players might only last a year away or or some of them maybe two years. I, I know a number of years ago um, when the downturn here, in the economy, uh, we lost uh, uh, a lot of players at the one time because a lot of them were involved in the construction industry and um, uh, a gang of them uh, went to Perth at the time. And it did hit us bad in the club. Um, you know, it, it took away, I'd say, the a good ha- half of the team, of the first team at the time, because they were all young young, young lads, able lads and... Um, they, they, you know, they all got work in Cape Town. Now, some of them are in um, in Perth in, in, in Australia. And they, a lot of them uh, came back when the economy improved here. A lot of them are involved in the club now. And some of them have themselves have um, uh, family members in, in uh, playing, playing with the club. So it's, you know, it's that, that's the, the, the cycle that you have. And uh, uh, you mightn't see a parent or, 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 or a, a young mother or a young father for, for years. The next thing, their own Johnny or Mary is playing out uh, and they're, they're back in the club and they're back involved in the club. And that's, you know, that's the way it goes. And that's the way probably a lot of volunteers uh, come through when, when their own family is involved in, 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 in playing within the club. And it's great to see. And sometimes even like, you know, when that happens, the club stay, the, the parents actually stay involved in the club as well, which is... Uh, which is good as well. They might, they, they might, um, instead of like obviously they're still parents, but what, um, they'd, they'd stay, they'd stay involved in the club in another capacity, maybe helping out in, in other ways, which is great. And it's their way of staying involved. And, um, and as you say, you know, the, the sons or daughters might go away to, might go away. And then when they come back, they'll, they'll get back into supporting their, uh, their son or daughter when they start coming back, getting involved in it. And, and that which is which is great to see. So um yeah, so we'll uh, we'll get get back into um I suppose Craig's rugby club now as as I say it's more or less uh come to an end. Uh what are your thoughts or has there been anything happening in the club this week or last week? Well I suppose uh, we we had a lovely event uh, there at the weekend uh, where we uh handed out the medals uh, to our under eighteen uh, girls uh uh, it was a, a brilliant night, and it was a brilliant night all round, uh, Aidan, and I'll touch on it later on, but it was the night that uh, that I, 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 I stayed back uh, for the presentation in Craig's without travelling up to Belfast for the game, 
Uh, but it was a great night to be able to watch the game in Belfast and then go on to presenting your own team on the or successful on their 18 girls side uh, with the, with their medals, both the losers' medals in the league and the the winners' medals for the for winning the the cup for the the Connacht under 18 cup competition, which they won uh, a number of weeks back in in Clare Morris. Uh, uh, against Chumuk Gerard, which was a, a great a great achieve, achievement for them, and uh, there were, there was also awards for special players uh, and fairness to the the coaching of the, uh, the, Dave uh, Dave and Siobhan Purcell, uh, Yvonne McPhillips, uh, and a, num- a number of other people that put in the effort with them. They they had had worked out, uh, yeah, kind of a. Um, uh, presentation uh, for for people that that put in the work or that there during the year on, in in various capacities and it was a, a, a lovely touch and it went down very well and I would let, let pay a tribute to to all the coaches uh, and and to the commitment shown by all the girls uh, over the season uh, some of them uh, got honours uh, some of them played um, at under eighteen level for Connacht. Uh, uh, four of them uh, was involved with the Irish squad as well. So you know that it was a great year for uh, uh, the the girls and Craig's and so, oh, some of our under 16s are involved in the development squad too with the, with with Connacht. So um, they and then they had the success. Uh, the girls uh, within within the convent. A lot of the same girls are involved with the with the with the convent here in Roscommon Town and some of them with the school in Belligar as well. So uh all round it it was good. And and they're currently now involved in uh, a seven seven aside uh with with Connet. Um, Connet has set up a seven uh, um squads uh and the clubs will be involved with that during the summer. And there'll be also developing squads uh training for the interpros that will be coming up later in the year. There will be there will be training sessions and that there during the summer months as well. So there's really no rest for the, the for the elite and the top uh, players um, within within these predictor squads. And and, and the same goes through uh, for the boys as well. That a lot of the underage boys teams and and players they they are involved in in uh, coaching uh, with Connacht and and um, involved. In, in being being involved in the development squads as well, and they're actually taking place there. Uh, some of the development squads in in Craig's um, on uh, every every week on a, on a Wednesday night now. So it's uh, it's great to to see the the club and that they're being used so much um, by Connacht, and that our own players can 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 take part in in these development squads. And I suppose from you, uh, from a personal point of view. Um, being involved in the club and your your position in the club, it must be a, a proud, a proud, it must have been a proud year for you to see, you know, all the various achievements by all the players and all the teams, you know, like all the titles that the that that was won by the club and uh, no, none more so than you know, well, at, at every um, age group un- underage team, but also with uh, with regards to how well and uh, you know the coaching through the years, how, how that has. Come through, and you see, you seen it with the first and second teams, uh, who have both won titles as well, which is great to see. So really, both at at underage and senior level, or shall I say, um, adult level, it's been a it's been a huge year really for the school for the school, and as you said, or for the club, and as you said as well with the um, you know, with, with some of the players, both boys and girls, being involved with the uh, with Connacht and obviously rugby or um. You know, with Connacht and of course a few people involved with the Ireland teams as well. It's been a hugely proud year for for you to be able to look at and and see the achievement by individual players and collect and players collectively as in the various teams. Yeah, I've always enjoyed uh, being involved in uh, um, in what they call in grassroots rugby. You know, it's there's nothing better than being involved with your own people and involved within your own club. And uh, see um, players coming coming through at, at various stages of their of their life and uh, grow, growing up, and uh, seeing them coming through uh, on mini rugby into youth rugby and then into the, um, the senior rugby. 
And you know, we it's a it, it's a great year, um, uh, Aidan, as you rightly said, to look back on. You know, we do to win the the junior league. We that that was our aim at the beginning of the year was to try and uh, take that junior league off Connemara, and um, we 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 achieved that. And you know, that was that was the main achievement of the year. And then the icing on the cake was our second team uh, doing so well as well, and um, when when on their uh, section in 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 the cup in the kind of cup competition. So you know, all in all, um, between our, our first and seconds and and youth, um, it it has been a great year for for the club, and um, we have been also in in a lot of other underage finals and youths, but we 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 may not have have won them, but it's some achievement to get it get into uh, kind of finals and to be able to play. Um, a high standard of rugby uh, in in front of your uh, parents and, and home support in in the sports ground. So um, you know, like it, uh, it was. I can honestly say, being president this year, it was a very enjoyable uh, year uh, to be to be part of the club, uh, Aidan. And of course, uh, you know, we, we never forget the the mini rugby section as well. It's been a hugely important year as well as it always is for mini rugby. And uh, so many very successful, as there always is, very successful blitzes that have gone throughout the season as well. And uh, it's great to see the, the, the kids enjoying those as well. And it's like we've said on a number of occasions uh, on, on this, on, on here, that, uh, you know, they're, they're huge, they're hugely key or they they're really are a key part in those play a key part in these kids developing their rugby skills as well. So it, it's great to see the blitzes and um, you know yeah how uh, how important they are. Yeah, and that has been acknowledged that it was acknowledged by our own club uh, at the at the dinner um, the annual dinner this year. Um, uh, that um, Shane Fleming, who's heads heads up the mini rugby section, that he was he was met come person of the year, and you know like the chain and his wife Orla, and all the coaching staff have done huge work uh, over the last number of years with the with the development of mini rugby, and that has also been acknowledged. Uh, Shane uh, and his and his team of coaches have been also acknowledged there within the last week uh, by Connacht Rugby as well. Uh, no more than our uh, youth rugby chair uh, as well and their personal has been acknowledged uh, by the IRFU in getting uh, an, an award uh, from the IRFU. So uh, it's it's just nice to see uh, the particular coaches that's uh, putting in massive amount of voluntary time into the club that they, they they have been acknowledged and acknowledged uh, for for their work, not alone within the club, but within Connacht and within the IRFU as well. So uh, you know it's uh, it's it's a nice uh, uh, thing for them because they, they you know they, they every Saturday morning uh, for uh, Shane and his team they're they're out there with boys and girls um, for the future players there between players between. Mainly between seven and and twelve years, and maybe some thirteen year olds there when, before they want to play on their thirteen level. So you know, it's a it's a huge commitment, and you know, and, and they are the backbone, and eventually will be the backbone of the of the club going going forward. And you know, when when you are doing a new development, and you're often wondering, uh, you know, are, are we spending all this money, and we want we want have players like because we have seen clubs. Uh, develop great facilities, and unfortunately, then uh, with immigration and all, and particularly rural clubs uh, in certain areas, they they don't maybe have have the players afterwards. But we're delighted that we, on average, we'd have up on two hundred um, uh, between boys and girls there training, and um, it's you know fantastic to see, and we see that that growth uh, will will continue within within the club, and uh, there's a great future. Uh, for the club, and you know that's why uh, we would like to say that we'll have facilities for them um, in the years to come. When 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 we move on, that these younger coaches and younger uh, players themselves, when they when they come on themselves, that the facilities will 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 be there for them. Yeah. 
That's it. And, uh, you know, I'm sure there's uh, much to look forward to from these teams next year. Uh, you know, the players that move up uh, up to the next level of underage. And, of and course, uh, you know, people from, uh, we say, under eight, players from under 18s and that, uh, moving up, moving into the second or first team uh, next season. So it's it's very exciting to look forward to, to next year and uh, our next season. And of course, uh, next season with the World Cup as well, there'll be, there'll be huge excitement uh, in the club and indeed all the clubs around the country as well. And uh, yeah, so we'll move on and look at AIL level now with the, with um, I suppose, uh, Buccaneers and, and uh, with Buccaneers as well as um, Sligo and of course, uh, you know, the clubs like that, uh, the things are kind of winding out and Carrick, Carrick and Shannon Rugby Club as well. Uh, things have wound down there, but uh, what we'll do is we'll have a look at uh, what's been going on in those clubs this week and uh, we'll do a season review of how things have gone w- with the clubs uh, throughout the season. Yeah, the the AIL is, uh, uh, competition is finished up for the year. Uh, they all the the playoffs and that they have taken place, and uh, the the final of the uh, AIL took place in the Aviva at the weekend there between Turnure and Clontarf, and uh, Turnure uh, came, came out very much on top. Um, they, they revenged for uh, last year Clontarf where where the were the, were the winners, but Turn Your went out all determined this year and uh, played a, played an exceptionally uh, good game against uh, Clontarf. And you know, it's, it's great to see and good standard of rugby at, at AIA level. Some of them players are probably good enough uh, to play uh, at, a, at a higher level within the inter provincial um, team. So I'm, I'm sure some of the coaches are looking at uh, some of these players and uh, more so within the IL and within the uh, Buccaneers, the Buccaneers unfortunately didn't make it uh, to to get promotion this year. But again, they 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 held their they held their place within the division, and and they'll be there to have a have a crack at it at it next year. And they're probably you know maybe looking at back on their season, they'll say, well, you know, when we were in a good position with four games to go, and we let it slip, and. Uh, you know, they'll be just. Uh, I'm sure asking how how it's happened and how how they they can uh, maybe um, better it for the for the following season. And uh, the with Sligo uh, would have the reverse to that. That Sligo um, did very well in the latter end of the season and, and got into the, the the playoffs. Now they didn't get promoted, but they they got into the playoffs for promotion. But they, they had a great season, and they you know they ended up runners up in the in in the league, which was great. Uh, Buccaneers then had their awards night. Um, they had, a, they had a big night that they, they you know they presented the awards to to all the the the, the, the t- their top players at, at the various levels between uh, senior and and uh, uh, youth level. Now the Buccaneers would. Um, no more than Sligo would have had an exceptionally good year at youth level. The Buccaneers would have won a number of youth um, youth games, uh, youth finals, and they uh, also qualified for a lot of other finals as well. So uh, again, it has been a good year um, at at that level for both um, Buccaneers and Sligo. Carrick and Shannon again. Uh, Carrick and Shannon would have uh, done well and you know competed very well. Uh, at senior level this year, and um, also their their uh, underage structure is continuing to improve, and they're they're also expanding into into schools um, in 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 Leitrim and also into North Roscommon up to uh, the school in Boyle and so on. So you know they're they're taking in a bigger hinterland there. They're also in um, the development process of the developing their their grounds in. Uh, in, in Carrick and Shannon as well. So um, the, if, when they have better facilities, it, 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 I'm sure they will a- attract a lot more young boys and girls into the club. That'll be, that'll be great as well. And of course, it, it's great to see all those, all, all those three clubs. So we'd like to say 
Well done to, to Craig's and, of course, Buccaneers, Carrick uh, Rugby Club and, of course, Sligo and the great work that's going on there. And I suppose, uh, yeah, next up, uh, we, we'll have a look at Connacht. And it's great to see uh, Connacht have uh, progressed to a, a semi-final, I believe. It's it's great to see that. And, of course, the, Mur the Murray brothers, uh, the Murrays have been playing their, their part in that. And, uh, you know, so it's great to see Jack Harty back uh, to his form and, of course, Dennis Buckley and various people like that. Um, you know, it, it's a great way to finish off the season. Yeah, it, it was, uh, you know, uh, a very exciting game in in uh, in Kingspan Stadium in Belfast uh, last uh, Saturday uh, night, and um, again a fantastic game, a fantastic uh, show by by Connacht. Uh, they didn't let Ulster into the game. They they uh, defended very well. They. Uh, if anything, they should have won by by a lot more. Uh, in the the butchered the number of tries, they had a number of opportunities, and uh, one reason or another, they seemed to get stage fright when they when they got inside the the opposition uh, twenty two. So uh, let's let's hope um, now as a result of the great result in um, in in Belfast, they travelled on Tuesday to uh, South Africa. They're uh, Landed in Cape Town on on Wednesday and had a training session on on Wednesday in the the Stormers and um, during during the month of January I spent the month of January in Cape Town myself and I visited I went to um, the one of the Stormers games against against Claremont in the Urban Cup and it was um, yeah, a fantastic stadium it is a stadium that was built at the time for for the Olympics and for the soccer tournament and you know it's a great it's a great uh, stadium uh, in the in the center of um, Cape Town and I know that the uh, that the lads will enjoy uh, playing there and hopefully you know they're going to be up against it it, it is going to be uh, you know from a tough game last weekend from the the long travel out to uh, Cape Town to expect them to to perform to the level that they performed um, against uh, against Ulster, but they will have to to be able to stick with the Stormers. Stormers are a very strong physical side with a number of uh, South African uh, players on 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 the team. But um, Andy Friend and his coaching staff has given a clear bill of health to all the players that did play last weekend. That they all travelled uh, uh, to Cape Town, so he he has a good hand to pick from and. Uh, uh, you know, as you mentioned, a number of players there, and um, it it was great to, to, this week uh, to see the announcement that uh, two of our kind of players uh, made the the uh, URC elite squad. So uh, in Phelan Beal and, and our own Niall Murray from Kiltoom. and Niall is a young man has come into that team, and he has really uh, grown in 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 stature in in, in playing. Uh, in the second row, and he's probably one of the highest uh, steals of lineouts. Uh, I think over sixteen that he has that he has got this year um, play, playing for Connacht. So Niall, Niall is a great future. He's a great athlete. I have been watching Niall um, and have been away with him on various um, uh, when I was involved with the review and under eighteen level and so on. And we, we did see a great future uh, for for Niall at that stage and. We we knew that he had to be fast tracked into developing squads and playing at a higher level of rugby, and he and he's showing that no more than his brother coming his younger brother coming along as well now. So, you know, we we'd like to see that the the likes of the Murrays, the our own Dennis Buckley, Jack Cartis, that all the, them uh, perform well now um, on Saturday afternoon on Saturday afternoon, and you know we'll be all glued to. To, to television or where, whatever channel we can we we can get it on uh, to 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 watch the game and we we wished we wished them all well uh, on on uh, Saturday and uh, of course moving on then to I suppose a review of the year for, of the season for the Ireland men's team uh, of course the under twenties team as well and of course the women's team it's been a, a great season for. That's what for the Ireland team. Um, you know they had a good they had a good November in the internationals um section, and of course that they, they were brilliant yes. in the um in, in the Six Nations as well. And now they're preparing for they have a World Cup to prepare for as well. 
Um, so obviously when the season finishes now, they'll uh, they'll probably start getting involved with Ireland camps and things like that ahead of the ahead of the the World Cup. So I suppose that uh, we we look back at the season for for all the Ireland teams. Yeah, well, there's a there's a, a good bit of rugby yet to play uh, uh, there, and it's great to see no more than Connacht in the RUC um, semi final to, to see that there that there is two other Irish teams in that there that we have three Irish teams in the semi finals in in uh, Leinster and Munster and Leinster and Munster uh, play uh, on on Saturday evening as well. So um, again, that that will be the RUC. So it will be down to uh, maybe. Maybe uh, two, one or two uh, Irish teams left in the competition. So it would be good to see two Irish teams uh, getting through to 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 the final. But we have to wait and see there. But and then uh, Leinster is involved in the uh, European Champions Cup, and um, they 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 are in the final against um, uh, La Rochelle, which has been uh, coached uh, by the famous monster out half and Irish out half uh, Ron Nogara. So. That will be a great battle and a great game to to look forward down the line as well. So there is a, a lot of a lot of rugby to play for there uh, before the international team uh, gets together. And you know, you're you're right, like that the the whole focus afterwards. And we'd be hoping that there be no uh, more severe injuries to players that they will that they end up missing out on the on the World Cup. You know, because it's always a worrying time that you'll that you'll have a few severe injuries. Because the time is is short enough now between uh, the end of the season and come uh, uh, September for for when the World Cup starts, the the warm up games uh, uh, will will take place in 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 August, and then they they head to, to France then for the World Cup in in September. So you know it, it has been an, uh, a great year for for Irish rugby and. Um, Overall, when you when you look at uh, to to see where where we're at to see where we're at at provincial level, I think it shows that we have the the proper structure of the four provinces within 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 Ireland, and to be able to bring out the best um, in in players and and working together with with uh, uh, a lot of the players that maybe that there's excess players in 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 Leinster that they have uh, moved to. Uh, some of the other provinces in order to get a higher standard of rugby, and that that has helped um, and has very much helped uh, the game, the Irish game of rugby, to try and keep as many of our top players happy and to keep them in 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 Ireland, uh, so that they are available for the Irish team. That's it, and that, that that's hugely important. So, uh, just to let the folks know, unfortunately, this is going to be the last uh, the last uh, podcast of uh, Rugby View uh, with myself and yourself for, for this year. And I, I just want to thank you very much for taking the time out every week uh, throughout the season to uh, be with us and uh, to give us your thoughts on uh, you know what's been happening in the various clubs at various levels throughout the season. And uh, I'm sure there's a number of people you want to think you want to thank as well, like maybe. You know the the sponsors of Craig's Rugby Club, and maybe you know all the teams and the, this that and the other and, and coaches and things like that uh, that have uh, played a huge part in the season. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like as I said, uh, you know there there's at least so many people uh, involved. Um, you know even even uh, without going on a broader basis outside the club, like, but within the club alone. You know the amount of volunteers that we have, the amount of people that are chairing various committees. We have a good structure, you know, that we have various committees like the football committee, like the finance committee, like the house committee, like the grounds committee. You know, all these uh, strands are working there themselves, and then they they all come into the overall committee, and it, it makes my job easier as as president with the type of work. Uh, that they're heading up uh, as chairs of the various committees and and report and reporting back into me on a, on maybe on some occasions on nearly on a daily basis. So it's it's great to have, to have that and to have that type of support and to have uh, people that are prepared to to give it that amount of voluntary time. And you know, without uh, without the sponsorship that we are getting. Uh, from our main sponsors like Warren Burke, uh, 
um, Murray Timber, a number of them out there that you know that that is continually to supporting us all the time. We have a lot of small sponsors um, that gets hoardings um, all around the pitches and so on. We have uh, then we have uh, n- another major source of income is our our lotto, our weekly weekly lotto, and we we encourage all anybody there to join up on the um, on the lotto because it's a. You know, it's it's the main trust uh, of, of of funding and uh, uh, coming coming into the club and and as well as the uh, the the membership. But again, we I would like to thank all the, the the people that supported the various draws that we had in the in the last year as well. That they 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 were very successful and we got great support uh, from the overall community uh, in in the Craig's catchment area and 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 far and wide and. You know, it's it's great to see, and it's great to see that there there is such a uh, such support uh, for for the club out there in the in the local community. That's great, and uh, yeah, and I suppose really it, it's great to see that, and we we'll, we we'll, we'll be looking forward to uh, to another great season, hopefully with all with all the teams again next week next season, and uh, of course you can take a break now, and you can uh, I suppose the next big thing after when this season finishes at URC level. Um, it's the, the World Cup and I suppose uh, you know Ireland camps and different things like that it's plenty to, to look forward to so uh, we'd like to thank everyone for tuning in and watching the watching the video every week and uh, you know it's been it's been great uh, covering rugby throughout the season and uh, we look forward to doing it all next season and in the meantime enjoy enjoy your time off and I'm sure you'll be you'll be still uh, you'll be, you'll be still um, involved in different things I suppose in rugby throughout the, throughout the summer as well yeah, thanks a lot, Aidan, for all your coverage and to uh, Roscommon FM for their, their great coverage of, of, of rugby uh, throughout, throughout the season. And again, as you well know, the off-season, a lot of work has to be put in for to get everything up and running for the for the next season. And um, the AGM will be our next plan now for the, the first Thursday in June. And, you know, the, the, the getting the coaching, all the coaching staffs uh, up for senior rugby, uh, for and then coaching staffs for youth rugby, and all that type of work uh, is done in the off season. So again, thanks to everybody, and thanks to you, to to yourself for hosting this program. No problem. Thanks very much. Uh, and that was Adrian Leddy uh, from Craig's Rugby Club. And uh, thanks very much, Adrian. And we'll talk to you again at the beginning of the season, or when, you know when things start to get active again in the club. So we'll talk to you then. Thank you very much, uh, Aidan. No problem. Thanks very much. And uh, yeah.